Hi, uh, my name is Tara McGowan Ross. I'm an urban Mi'kmaq writer and multidisciplinary artist. Uh, I'll be reading you some poetry from my first two books, uh, which are called Girth and Scorpion Season, and they're both available at your favorite independent bookstore. This first one is called Obad One. Awake, empty, ache briefly, hit snooze as many times as you can in yesterday's clothing and a nest of sleep scribbled notation, all of it hanging stale from your flesh and bed garments loosened from the exhaust fumes of your body into a thin layer of grime. Wake, silky, moist as the morning. Admire the depth and breadth of your hunger to be here, to be capable of ignoring the pinnacle of tens of thousands of years of evolution. Ignore it like the pleas of a child. You would make a terrible mother. Do not feed yourself, you think, as light filters in through a month's worth of precariously arranged water glasses on the window ledge above your bed. Do not feed yourself, you think, as the glasses throw a dozen different rainbows on the wall. Do not feed yourself, you think, as they clink together at a dozen different pitches, as the circular shadows from a dozen arrangements of dust make their lazy way across the room. This is how you start the morning. Your body screaming from the effort of being anything but still as you steel yourself against the oncoming struggle for a singular goal. While all across the city, people wake, take their coffee and their pastries, and in the distance, the drumlins sit, your sisters, places where Pieces of this earth held on so tightly while the world around them was carved away. So Girth, my first book, is a um, narrative in verse. Uh, this is from later on in the story. It's called Are You Lonely? Her girlfriend left for the weekend and I escalated tactics, charged riot cops with a certainty I didn't have, invited her over for post-demo beers, it's okay, just one, or two, or seven, kept her late until her girlfriend's name punched holes in our silence, asked her, would you, just once, until she had to make a statement. The instant she said never, I knew, I'd have to stay. This is how I operate. I say, are you going to the demo tonight? And what I mean is, please risk something with me. I say, is it okay if I sleep here? And what I mean is, will she be coming home? I say, did they hurt you? Are you okay to run? And what I mean is that I am tired of pretending that I am only killing time. What I mean is that it's complicated. And who am I to judge? What I mean is I won't tell. I promise. And then after I wake up, she is flat on her back, gripping the sheets like she is afraid of falling. I am afraid of falling been afraid since the first time I saw light pouring through the cracks in her resolve. All out of no. Her lips against my neck, I 
Love that your shoulder has landmarks. So now we're skipping through to book number two, which is called Scorpion Season. It came out last year or two years ago, I guess now. Last year doesn't count, though, so last year. This one's called Confessional. I don't tell him about the sex or the swearing or the drinking. I know Jesus brought the party. God and I are chill. Instead, I say, Father, I haven't been taking any joy in this life at all. This is from Libations 2. This could have ended differently. Addiction is a social disease. Overdose is a cultural quality. The sad banality of I wish you were here. You could say this better than me. This one is called Obad for a Shipbuilder. It's written after Julie Manel and Kai Cheng Tom, and it was originally a forgery of phone sex with a one-time lover on the West Coast by Julie Manel. Morning lifts us shortly upwards, where we surface, ashy as my darlings in the urn of your bed. Our mouths make sticky facsimiles of kisses. We know something here needs rebuilding. We know these projects take time. I knew the risks when I came. After all, everything is lost or broken eventually. Please. Please tell me that I am worthy. Your compliance, however hesitant, is noted. I need to write things down before I forget them. Did you call me pretty or beautiful when prompted? Do I fuck like a woman who has lost things? Do you feel like a man when I arrive, folders pregnant with evidence of your trespasses? In this economy, of desire. We must relinquish certain resources to collect returns, and by the books I fronted too much. But you already came in me, and the time for escaping with my dignity intact left when the dawn set the mile end on fire. A psychologist tells me we repeat our parents' habits in love and money. My immediate family history is one of resource mismanagement. It doesn't always make sense to save things for mornings that might never come. Since we are here now, why not give it away? I put my underwear back on and the motions ignite the embers in my sweating temples, which is what I deserve. When your fingers found the space between mine, they were looking for something, but your informant needs time to recover. I feel most like a woman when you reply in single syllables. I have more things to say. Kindly respond to the attached survey at your earliest convenience. Was this solidarity or charity? I apologize for the obfuscating nature of my instructions. I am contractually obligated to refrain from the egging of your house, or from making a scene at your work, or from using your wife's legal name. Which side is my better side? What are the advantages to exchanging one kind of allyship for another? Now is probably a rude time to ask. I. One must make difficult choices to engage in political acts like espionage or womanhood. 
Sometimes it's worth a little less integrity for the trust of a good snitch. Instead of writing profanities on your bathroom mirror, I scratched my knuckles raw in silence. This is an issue of sustainability. I swore I would stop apologizing in matters of sex and business. So instead I say, thank you for your time and for your interest in this project. On my walk home, I notice the ground is full of bodies saying you can make an entire civilization out of birch bark. How in some languages, the translation of the word inheritance is a story about where you come from. I can't help but notice the sunrise over the Rosemont overpass and that it has come to raise this monastery you have built from your guilt. I will tell my daughters about you. I will carry the best of this like a girl rocking safe in the canoe of your arms. I will let the rest rot into the ground. Thanks. I'm Tara McGowan Ross. Um, my book is coming out. It's called Nothing Will Be Different this fall from Dundurn Press. Thank you very much. Bye.